Last year, Cullybaggy farmer Robert McCahey, with the help of some local classic tractor enthusiasts, organised a charity Corn Silage Day DVD and tractor run in support of the Northern Ireland Air Ambulance. These events raised the generous sum of £3,200 for the charity. Due to last year's success, Robert and the members of the newly founded Craig's Tractor Enthusiasts Club decided to run the events again this year. This year's project would show the full corn growing process, all to be captured on film, culminating in a corn silage cutting day at the end of the season. The local men selected a five and a half acre field just off Craig's Road outside Cullybaki as the location for this year's event. On April the 8th, a mild spring day, the ploughing of the field commenced, drawing a considerable crowd of tractor enthusiasts who came to demonstrate their skills for the camera. Leading the way was Sam Irwin and his County 1184 tractor, while event organiser Robert McCatty's Ford 7810 came next, driven by Harry Sterling. Club member Alex Gregg, also on a Ford 7810, is next in line. Most recent club member David Law is seen here in his Case 1294. Following David is Sam Sterling in his Ford 7710. Next up is a Massey Ferguson 360, driven by Brian Hanna. Osbert White's V8 Perkins powered Nuffield is next in line. Another club member, Robert Graham, is seen here ploughing in his Ford 7600. Thanks to the light nature of the land and the ideal conditions, the furrows turned over with ease, with this collective of classic tractors ploughing the field in under an hour. The organisers were pleased with the success of the first stage of the events, hopeful that the rest of the year would run just as smoothly. Robert's mum and dad catered for the hungry ploughman, with fresh baps brought to the field along with a welcome cup of tea, the cream buns proving particularly popular. After the tea break, a couple of vintage tractors arrived to complete the remaining unploughed sections. 
A Ferguson T20 TVO driven by Joshua Davidson was joined by William Lamont in a Massey Ferguson 35X. After the ploughing was complete, the club members had hoped to get the field prepared within a few days. However, unfavourable weather conditions forced a brief delay before the ground could be prepared and the crop planted. A couple of weeks later, and with a decent forecast for the 21st of April, the men were able to begin the preparation of the land. On a warm, sunny spring evening, Brian Hanna with his Massey Ferguson 6470 and a power harrow started the preparation of the ground. The Massey Ferguson 188, also owned by Brian, took on the task of powering a hard rotavator. Sam Irwin, operating a New Holland TM125 with a Kuhn power harrow, was next in line. With club member Trevor Sterling in his Ford 7840, equipped with a Cavernland power harrow. Following on, another club member, Alex Gregg, is seen here in his Ford 7810 with a land leveller. Following Alex is Robert in his Ford 7610, also with a land leveller attached. Club member Robert Graham follows behind in his Ford 7740, pulling a set of trailed discs. In these perfect conditions, the ground was made ready in half an hour and was now ready for the seed. But before the classic tractors start planting, we get a demonstration of how the seed was sown before the arrival of the tractor and its implements. Robert's father, William, displayed his skill in broadcasting the seed using a corn fiddle. In the past, a man with a fiddle could sow about an acre in a day. William and Robert Graham are seen here inspecting the results. Club member David Law has brought along his Massey Ferguson 30 18 row seed drill. David is seen here filling the drill with corn seed as his son James keeps a watchful eye. Club member Trevor Sterling lends a hand loading the bags of seed. With the seed hopper full, fertilizer is also loaded into a separate compartment, as this will be applied directly into the ground along with the seed. The men set the gauge on the seed drill to the rate at which the seed is to be applied, and they're now ready to go. As this field was destined to be used for whole crop silage, grass was sown alongside the corn. Robert believes this combination offers superior nutrition for his cattle and enhances the quality of the feed.
Local contractor Geoffrey Atchison provided his machinery for sowing the grass seed. Anthony McTague, better known as Nenty, is seen here in Geoffrey's New Holland T6145, equipped with a grass air seeder. Once the corn and grass seeds were planted, Jack Sterling rolled the field to complete the planting. Throughout the following 12 weeks, visits to the field were made to check on the crop's progress. Despite the wet weather, the grass and corn thrived. Fast forward to Friday, August the 11th, and preparations were in full swing for the main event scheduled for the next day. The field was damp and the forecast for the following day was ominous, yet the club members made the decision to stick with their planned date of Saturday, August the 12th. The gamble paid off as the morning arrived with conditions more favourable than expected. The forecast didn't deter the crowd of spectators who started gathering around the field from 11am. This year's event was drawing a larger audience of spectators and harvesters, indicating its growing popularity. A fleet of machinery was lined up ready to harvest the five and a half acre field manned by both the participants who had been involved in the ploughing and planting, as well as additional harvesters who joined on the day. Robert initiated the proceedings, driving his Ford 7810 with a New Holland 339 double chop, 
while Harry Sterling followed in Roberts Ford's 7610, collecting the freshly cut silage. Alex Gregg is second in line in his Ford 5000 with a JF single chop harvester. Finley Mackay is seen here in a Ford 4000 with a kid double chop with one of Robert's other tractors, a New Holland T7185 driven by Jack Sterling drawing. Next up is Ken Cook, driving his Ford County, pulling a tar up double chop. Seen here is Sam Sterling, driving his Ford 7710, equipped with a New Holland 339 double chop. Here we see Osbert White with his V8 Perkins powered Nuffield and tar up double chop. Drawing beside Osbert is club member David Law in his Case 1294, pulling a 6.5 ton trailer made for class by Fraser Trailers of Scotland. Next up is Nigel Kerr, driving a Massey Ferguson 178, pulling a 1972 Ugger Lowe's single chop harvester. Spectators looked on as the tractors and harvesters were undeterred by the sticky conditions. As the rain began to fall, Sam Irwin emerged with his Ford County, pulling a kid double chop. Here again we see Finlay Mackay's Ford 4000, this time with Andy Hayes drawing in his Ford 4000.
Here's club member Trevor Sterling in his Ford 7840, pulling his New Holland 341 double chop. Next up is Brian Hanna in his Massey Ferguson 168, paired with a New Holland 339 double chop. This time round drawing for Osbert White in the Nuffield is Neil McCulloch in his Massey Ferguson 698. Seen here is Neil Anderson in his New Holland 7840 with a New Holland 339 double chop. Drawing for him is Sam Kirk's Ford 7840. <music> Willie Dewey is seen here on Alex Gregg's six cylinder Ford 4000. To help get the field finished, Jeffrey Atchison takes the wheel of Alex Gregg's Ford 5000. Despite less than ideal weather, the ice cream vendor remained popular among the spectators, while the burger van provided a warmer option for those seeking something more substantial. Some of the spectators also brought along their own tractors, which were on display throughout the day. The second field, which hosted last year's corn silage event, has now been sown in grass, and all present were keen to get this field harvested before the weather broke. Even with a few heavy showers, the classic machines made short work of the field. Mm -hmm. 
James Connolly from Tractor and Machinery magazine was present on the day and captured some close-up photographs of the action, which were set to feature in an impressive article showcasing the event in the October edition of the magazine. One of the highlights of the day was Geoffrey Atchison on a New Holland FX48 self-propelled harvester. This impressive piece of machinery owned by Jack Miller, a long-standing agricultural contractor from Brookshain, would provide some fast-paced action to help finish off the field of grass. As the day progressed, the weather improved and the shining sun dried out both the field and the spectators.
Firstly, it's brilliant to see everybody turned out this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed your afternoon out in your tractor run. Uh, it's a super job, and without you having supported this cause, uh, it doesn't happen. So a super thanks, and I'm just saying these thanks on behalf of Robert for Robert to be a bit shy. And after the day, I think he's under pressure to buy a Massey. But that's <laughs> but, but, but just 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 keep that for uh, Kevin's calling round and Monday to lift the tractor. So we'll have to wait and see. So first of all, there's a few thanks here for Robert. We like this thanks. First of all, a very special thanks to everybody. First of all, for taking part. It's a worthy cause. You should all give generously, which is greatly appreciated for the cause. Now, look from there, Anne, unfortunately can't be here this afternoon but she does pass on her thanks as well for everybody for the support and first of all also we'd like to thank the help of Sam and Robin Coleman this afternoon for the use of their yard for everybody allowed to come and meet so very very special thanks to Sam and, and Robin for that also with a, a guest here he's come from Longford he says it's a three hour drive um, as Farmer Phil, so a very special thanks for him and his father for coming today. We will hand you over to him in a few minutes and he'll give you a few words of wisdom. Uh, also, a special thanks to Kevin and Mega Derry's for the land of the tractor, for Farmer Phil and also to the Fintons for the tractor for his father this morning there. Very much thanks for that. There's a lot of work that does go on behind the scenes now. There's a girl, Laura, which does a lot of work, so we do like to thank Laura for all her help and support, which does work on behind the scenes to make sure everything's run. The tractor run, as you know, there has to be planning going to it to make sure everything works from start to finish. So, first of all, if you'd please, uh, a round of applause for everybody just for all their thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Farmer Phil. <laughs> If I don't say that, there's something wrong, so I have to start with that one. But um, great to see it the turnout here, even though it was, look, it was not the best day, but I suppose there's nothing else to be at on the day for it. But um, it's great to see the turnout and supporting the cause. Um, it's a service that is a vital service, but no one wants to know about it till you need it. So it's great to see that it's there and to be able to support it. And I'd like to thank Michael Derry's for supplying the ATS and Killian's for um, letting it down to me. It's great to get the experience to drive it. I never sat in one before and oh man, I'd love to be bringing it back to Longford, but um, I have a house to do first before I can buy another tractor or otherwise Liv is going to kill me and she's a home fleet in the captain, so I better keep her happy. So, um, and to Fenton's as well for sending up the 3690 for Father Phil to drive. Um, like to get my own one just running as nice as that it's not just running as well at the minute but sure how whenever we get there eventually like the 1200 and all things take time but um thanks to the committee as well for inviting us up and um yeah we've had a good day and hope everyone's enjoyed it and great to see the turnout so um that's it for me good luck thank you very much farmer phil uh it's great that he just make the effort what would be really appreciate that happen Thank you very much everybody for coming along today to support this um, tractor run run in just to support um, Air Ambulance. Just to give you um, a wee bit of a feel for what Air Ambulance does, it's a charity established in 2017, um, very much dependent on support of you guys here today and the likes of you. Um, every day the Air Ambulance is called out approximately twice every day um, and since its establishment in 2017 it's been called out approximately 4,000 times. Now that's 4,000 people that have, have been given a chance. Unfortunately not all of them have um, made it right through the, the process but they've been given a chance. Um, I think we've got to remember that it's a, a charity based here in Northern Ireland. It's very important that we all support it where we can. Seven and a half thousand pounds a day to run it. Um, it takes a lot of work, and I think we have to give special thanks to to Robert and his team here today that have gone to the effort of putting this run on. Um, I know from previous experience, it takes an awful lot of work in the background to get an event like this coordinated um, and run on the day. Um, all those traffic marshals and everything that's involved with it. Um, I think it's probably a good idea that we all give them a big round of applause. The Craig's Tractor Enthusiasts Club 
have raised over £3,000 this year to date for Air Ambulance, with all proceeds from the sale of this DVD being added to that total. The club members would like to thank everyone who has helped in making the events featured in this film possible, and would like to thank everyone for their continued support.